Hello there. Uh, yesterday I just got done with watching Spider-Man 2. So let's talk about it. <laughs> so hello. Uh, so in Spider-Man 2 we follow Peter Parker from the very first movie. And so in this movie he can't choose who he wants to be. He either wants to be Spider-Man or he wants to be Peter Parker. And he's basically missing the Peter Parker life because he's been busy being Spider-Man and catching criminals. Not really being there for Mary Jane, you know. So because he's just so busy catching criminals, he doesn't have time to stop by her play to watch her and anything. And uh, he's missing school. He's not doing so well. So... He has to he has to do a study report on Doctor Octavius' uh, thing that he's do that he's making, and as you can expect from a Spider-Man movie, that goes terribly wrong, and it shocks Octavius right kind of like right in the back where his uh uh thing is to control the arms that he has in the movie, his mechanical arms that he has in the movie. And uh, basically, they start controlling him. So basically, he becomes the bad guy. And then throughout the movie, P Peter Parker can't choose who he, he wants to be. Either he wants to be Spider-Man or he wants to be Peter Parker. And um, he chooses to be Peter Parker. But he's also watching. So when he's Peter Parker, he's just watching crime go by and he's like, Okay, I guess I won't do nothing about it. It's the cops. All of a sudden, he sees a lot of things in New York going downhill that he knows that it's his responsibility to take care of New York, take care of the villains, you know, punch them and everything. But when he's Peter Parker, he's just like, eh, nope, nope, let the police do that until he learns in the movie that he needs to be Spider-Man. No matter what. Because there's this one scene where a house is on fire. And there's a little girl trapped. In the fire. He rescues the little, he rescues the little girl as Peter Parker. But there was a human stuck on the fourth floor. That died because of the fire. So he realizes that's on his hands. Because he's not. Because he wasn't Spider-Man. And. Basically what this movie is. Do basically, I think this what this movie is saying to the people is still be yourself. You know, if you lose yourself or just don't care anything, things could go probably wrong. You know, like let's say like in the Spider Man role where Peter Parker's like, nope, I'm gonna not be Spider Man anymore. He see he sees his New York going downhill, where cops can't control Dr. Octavius, they're getting beat up by him, fires are burning in buildings, they can't save everyone, that's basically Spider-Man's job, but Peter Parker's like, nope, nope, so then Dr. Octavius, he wants to build a, uh, build the machine again, but this time, see if it works, but the incident that happened the first time killed his wife, Made him psycho. And so pretty much this time he's trying to... I believe if I remember blow up New York pretty much. He's trying to create the sun. Which uh, has like magnetic fields or something. Because like all these metal things start attracting to it. And going into the sun making it bigger and stronger. So that's, that's a big uh oh. And um... So basically, what I have to give this movie is a ten out of nine out of ten. It's a great movie, though. It's a great Spider-Man movie. You know, everyone keeps saying it's the best superhero movie, but I think it's also one. Of, I think it's one of the best Spider-Man movies of all time. Sorry, and it it really kind of like leans in when Spider-Man's. When Peter Parker's not being Spider-Man and he sees all this, you know, he's just 
acting normal. All of a sudden, he sees a civilian on the other side getting beat up by criminals and everything. And he's like, mm. you know, he's just like that, like just like walking away. But he knows, like, he knows that he probably needed to step in and be like, psh, psh, psh. hey, leave that little man alone. Decides not to do that. That guy's got that guy probably got hurt and everything. But somehow he's making Mary Jane happy for being there for him. Till he starts realizing he needs to be Spider-Man. He needs to protect these people. These people need Spider-Man. Kids look up to Spider-Man. People need him. People need help from him. Because there's all these criminals out there now. And that's what he learns throughout the movie. Is like he needs to be, I believe, maybe if I got this memo right, he needs to be someone that, he needs to stop being someone that he's not. He's Peter Parker. He's Spider-Man. He needs to start protecting the, sit the city. And he starts realizing that once he's Peter Parker, he's like, he's kind of like, look at all the damage is happening once I stop being Spider-Man. Dog Ock is taking over. Criminals are on the street. Oh, boy. But when I'm Spider-Man, I can't really be there for Mary Jane because I'm helping out other citizens. I can't be there for... A lot for Aunt May because it's my responsibility to take to help this city. And he basically learns from Uncle Ben with great. He has like this dream where he's in Uncle Ben's car again. And um, he has a dream with Uncle Ben where Uncle Ben's telling him that that spider pretty much gave him responsibilities to take care of New York. That's Spider Man's responsibilities. And basically, if Peter Parker chooses to be Peter Parker, his whole city is going to go downhill because there's no Spider-Man. But Peter's like, no, I just, I just want to be me. I just want to be Peter Parker. You know, he didn't really choose to be Spider-Man because he got bit by that spider, but now it's his responsibility because now every villain is going after what Mary Jane, his friend, the city... So he needs the, that responsibility to be Spider-Man to protect the city. And not be really Peter Parker all the time. You know, crime on the other hand. Pew, 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 pew. Hold on, I'll be back Mary Jane. Pew. Mary Jane, I have to say in this movie, is not my favorite Spider-Man love interest. She's just not like my favorite. Like you can see in the movies where she's just kind of like... Peter, why, why won't you, you know, why won't you there for me? Why won't, what, you think I'm ugly? No, 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 Mary Jane, no, I don't think that. But, but Spider-Man has, you know, responsibilities too. <laughs> it's all about you, Peter, isn't it? Peter pretty much said it's not all about him. He loves you too, Mary Jane, but... You went on like that. Mary Jane, I have to say, throughout these movies, though, is just not my, again, not my favorite character. I was just kind of like, Mary Jane, he's, you know, he's Spider-Man. He has to protect the city. You said that you would go, that you would go on if you love him, these challenges with him, get kidnapped and everything. That's what you said. But then you go on to another fight and then this and that. Because he didn't, he didn't do nothing. He's just protecting the city. He loves you. Perfect. No, no, no. That's why I just hate about the Mary Jane character throughout these movies. Where it's just like, she's just like, Oh, Peter, I love you, but I, sorry, I just can't really be with you, but I love you. Okay, maybe not like that, but like, she was kind of like, I don't want to say the B word. But she was kind of girly about it. Like, really, like, girly about it. Where it's like, Peter, you really love me, but you are just you just care about yourself. Where Peter's like, no, no, no. I care about you. I care about the city because I'm Spider-Man. And that's how, basically, he became just this Peter Parker. Because he wanted to also give Mary Jane attention. He wanted to give Aunt May attention. You know, he wanted to stop being Spider-Man because... He's missing out on all this other stuff because whenever he's just on the street enjoying a date with Mary Jane, all of a sudden he sees the cops go by and criminals and he's just like, oh boy, another life of Spider-Man. 
You know, he's kind of like that, but he learns, again, he learns throughout the movie that he needs to be Spider-Man. He, this is his, this is his home. He needs to clean his home from all the, all the roaches and spiders. He needs to, like, smash them. And maybe talk about the Doc Ock situation. Oh, yeah, and then, oh, wait, and Peter Parker, you know, he has a job besides being Spider-Man, but that doesn't pay the bills, you know, so they don't even know he's Spider-Man. He's just going, they're all going like, Spider-Man is a menace. He is a menace to this city, you know. <laughs> but, yeah, Peter Parker, you know, has a job. He has a girlfriend trying to give all that attention, trying not to lose money and everything because he's chasing criminals, doing his responsibility, trying not to, but... On the Peter Parker side, when he's trying to be Spider-Man, he's trying not to be late for class. He's trying not to be late for uh, working, uh, delivering pizzas. Because at the beginning, he gets at the beginning he gets fired from his job because there's criminals running by, and he's like, "Okay, gotta stop these criminals." Okay, I'll make it on time. I'll make it on time. He's late, and uh, the people won't pay him because he's late. So, yeah, that's what he was like. I, I just don't want to be Spider-Man anymore. You know, I'm late for my job, late for my class. And we start seeing that when he started to turn into Peter Parker, then Spider-Man. Like, he's on time for his class, on time for his job. You know, he's doing good, living the good life. But then he sees his city also crumbling down. You know, he sees criminals beating up, beating up the innocents, you know. Uh... Cops, cops going after Doc Ock and getting killed by him. Doc Ock, Doc Ock pretty much take, so pretty much on the Harry, Harry Osborn side, Harry Osborn wants to kill Spider-Man because pretty much Green Goblin killed himself with the glider in the first movie. But Spider-Man was there and Spider-Man brought him home where Harry Osborn was like, what did you do? What did you do? So he thinks Spider-Man actually killed his father. Once the only the glider did. But that glide... So basically the glider was going to kill Spider-Man. Spider-Man dodged it. And basically, if you know... Psst, stabbed the Green Goblin, Norman Osborn. And Harry Osborn finds out he gets mad. And he's like, you know what? For my father's sake, I'm going to kill Spider-Man. That's where Peter Parker's like, oh, I'm, oh boy, this is going to be a messy friendship because I am Spider-Man. He figures this out in Spider-Man 2 when Doc Ock pretty much uh, beats Spider-Man up and everything, you know, like, oh, I'm in a haze, okay. Knocks him out pretty much, brings in the Harry Osborn. To, uh, oh boy, the fusion, something about fusion or something for his machine that he needs from Harry. Harry wants Spider-Man dead. So, he brings Spider-Man, alive, well, alive or dead. He brings Spider-Man. Harry brings him his fusion. Harry rips off the mask and he tumbles back like, no, 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 no. This can't be, this can't be Peter Parker. Because also Peter Parker has also responsibility to keep his identity a secret from the people he loves. So that includes Mary Jane, Harry Osborne, and Aunt May. Because if he if they one of them gets in trouble, he doesn't know what, what to do. You know, he doesn't know what he's gonna do if one of them gets hurt or killed. But in this movie they start a little bit figuring out who Spider-Man is either Aunt May, I mean, no, wait, Mary Jane actually figured out who Spider-Man was because Spider-Man, uh, I believe, actually did take off the mask in front of Doc Ock. Mary Jane just happened to be there in the moment because she's all, like, tied up because Doc Ock has her and he wanted to see that he was really Peter, that he was Peter Parker so Doc Ock could be like, Peter, you know, 
And but basically, yeah, this was just a nine out of ten movie. I still think the first one was pretty really good. You know, it's just a simple, really good story. This one was like take that, but better, a little bit, a little bit better. You know, but I, I still think the first one still for me, the first one is still on the top. Like this is like nine, maybe like nine and a half or one of those two or ten and a half. You know, it's like right next to Spider-Man 1. It's a good sequel. Like, this is the movie you need to watch. If you made a, if you made a successful movie and you want to do a sequel, watch this movie. And then be like, this is what I need to do for my sequel. Like, you know, make a good sequel. But anyway, that's my review on uh, Sp Spider-Man 2. So, if you love me talking about movies... Make sure you like and subscribe. Comment down what was your favorite Spider-Man movie of all time. And I'll catch you guys later.